and a very good day to all our viewers. My name is Zeenat Islam and I'm the Relations Manager Academia Network. We are back again with our YSBC web lecture series and today is lecture seven, experience of seeding social business in India, East Africa and Latin America through bottom-up financing. Today we have with us our moderator, Ms. Yanis Valades Cortes, coordinator for the UNOS Innovation Pathway Center, Universidad de Monterrey in Udem, Mexico. And our speaker today is Ms. Saskia Broistin, co-founder and CEO, UNOS Social Business, YSB. UNOS Social Business tackles poverty from the bottom up with philanthropic venture funds and the top down with corporate innovation. YSB funds grow local social businesses that provide employment, education, healthcare, clean water, and clean energy to over 9 million people in East Africa, Latin America, and India. Yanis is from our YSBC at UDEM, Mexico. She's a passionate change maker and always ready to jump in and be a part of our activities. So thank you very much, Saskia and Yanis, for being a part of our session today. And without further delay, I hand the floor to Professor Mohamed Yunus for his opening remarks. Professor Yunus. Hello, everybody. Good to be back again. It will be it's going to be a very exciting lecture today. We are waiting for that. And it will be moderated by Yanis. Uh, the name Yanis comes so close to Yunus, everybody knows her. Because uh, when we mention Yanis, people get confused. Can it be a girl? Yeah, oh, she is a girl. And very important one, too. And uh, very good information that uh, she will be entering uh, her 30th birthday, celebrating 30th birthday in two days. So let's uh, give her a happy birthday here today. And uh, that's also very important because uh, she is get, getting to 30. And I'm always talking about 30, and she's entering the 30. Welcome to 30. Fantastic. And before I talk about the lecture itself, uh, let me tell you a story. Two young girls who were studying in uh, one very important university in the world. Uh, studying economics, got very excited. They want to change the world when they get out of the university. And they got out of the university and went to the top consulting firms. Uh, they thought this is the best way to serve the world and change the world. And they did. And in the meantime, they heard about source of business and they got thrilled about it. They started learning about it and they said, oh, wow, that's not what we, this is not what we want to do. This is what we want to do. That's how we're going to change the world. They quit the job, both of them, and joined the social business organizations and worked for three years there. And they saw that this organization is about promoting social business, which is good, but they want to do it on hand. They want to do it themselves, uh, create social businesses. They decided to quit the organization and create their own organization. And they did. And that's the story Saskia will tell us. And one of these two ladies that we are talking about, two young women who wanted to change the world, uh, doing all this and created UNIS Social Business. And Saskia Bornstein is one. Sophie Eisenman is another one. Today we have uh, Saskia here. She'll be telling the story herself. So welcome to this lecture. And uh, Yanis, now the floor is yours. Go right ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, thank you. for the introduction and Sinat also. First of all, thank you to the UNIS Center for the invitation to moderate and letting the ways we see to learn a little bit more about social businesses with leaders in the field. And well, Saskia, it, it is a pleasure really to meet you. And it's an honor to have the opportunity to share this lecture with you. I want to introduce like some of your uh, goals and also things have, that you have done and awards that you have received. So we know you are a co-founder of the UNO Social Business, but you are a leader in the social business mo movement. You have had two awards this year also about the Bold Woman Award by Bilbo Clicot, and congratulations for that. Also, the Handelsbad Bordenka, I don't know if I'm saying it correct. Um, uh, well, you have had a war smart list from 2013, Capital Young Alien 2017, 2018, and well, you're a member of the Young President's Organization. And I think something very important of this year is that together with the World Economic Forum, you co-initiated the COVID Alliance for Social Entrepreneurs, spanning almost 60 leading impact first organizations and networks. 
Well, and I can continue saying a lot of you, but I think it's moment to begin uh, with several questions. But I would like also to encourage the public to make some questions through that chat box, and we will try to give an, a follow-up during this lecture. And one thing to say is that we are going to divide this these topics in three big topics about Saskia for his her career, then about Juno social business strategies and tips for entrepreneurs. And well, let's go in. Um, you have a lot of titles and awards that describe what you have done through your leadership with Professor Yunus, but I would like to know how you described yourself. Did you imagine 10, 15 years ago, a career, what you wanted to be when you graduate from university or your master? Thank you so much, Yanis. And, and I, I, I have to say, I'm blushing here a little bit with all those things that you're reading out. Um, all the things that I'm part of, it's just for one reason, which is to promote the social business cause. And um, that's why, yeah, I'm, I'm happy and uh, also in some ways proud that UNO Social Business has received these awards, in this case, through me in some of the cases of, because they need to pick some person to give the award to in that sense. But in the end, it's been the work of uh, UNO Social Business, the work that our, our team around the world um, that has is, that is actually received those prizes um, and, and not me as a person. Um, and uh, yeah, again, the only reason why we like to be part of all of these networks like YPO, the Young Presidents Organization, et cetera, is to promote that idea um, and make sure that the normal mainstream business world understands that social business is an alternative and one um, yeah, that is now more relevant um, than ever. So you're, you're asking about sort of how did that all start for me? Um, I think Professor Yunus just um, already gave a little bit of a summary to, to, to potentially tell you a little bit of my story and how it, how it all began. Um, you know, my background is um, I'm half German and a half Canadian. So I grew up mostly in Germany and part in the US. Um, I come from a, you know, middle-class background with a family that was able to give me everything I needed in terms of education and, um, you know, healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I was basically, in some ways, I won the, yeah, the lottery of, of growing up as a woman um, in, uh, in, in the West, in some ways, in, in Germany and in the US. So I had all the opportunities. Um, and um, I, well, I always believed in if you work hard, you can get to the top and you can be successful. Um, and that that's sort of the, the way I was also educated. Um, and um, my, my background was that I, um, well, I was, you know, I was, as we call it, a streber, like a, one of those like kids that is always doing like this in school, really annoying um, and, and, and graduated top of my class in school. And then after that, I was like, okay, what is the most ambitious thing I can do? And then they were like, oh, you have to study this. So I tried to apply to that university and I got in. And then after that, they were like, oh, what's the most ambitious thing you can do? Go into consulting. And um, so I did that. And I think the first time in my life, I think when I was like 26, 27, I actually started thinking of what I was actually doing there. Um, and I realized I had just been on a path, a little bit that job seeker path that Yunus always talks about, about like, you know, this is the way that we do things in the world. Like that's the path I had always been on, very disciplined, et cetera. And I think the first time when I was like 26, 27, I opened my eyes and I, I realized, you know what? that's not the, what the world is actually really like. And not everyone has the same opportunities. And the opportunities that I had in my life, almost no one in the world has them. And I think that was the moment when it sort of clicked to me that I said, you know, I have a responsibility to do something to make sure that other people have those opportunities as well. Even though I, you know, I didn't know really what poverty meant. I had not grown up in poverty or anything like that, but I realized I had this responsibility. Um, but then, you know, when you start thinking the first time in your life, you start seeing the problems in the world. And when you start seeing the problems in the world, it's really easy to get overwhelmed. Um, and I think that was my first reaction. I was like, oh my God, how am I as a small little management consultant going to change anything in the world? And that was like a shock. Uh, and so I started looking and I started thinking about different approaches, but I really didn't know until I was so lucky to hear Professor Yunus speak at, um, at um, LSE at the London School of Economics in London. 
where I was sort of doing another master's after my work time. And suddenly it all made sense to me, this idea of social business that he talked about, the idea of there are social problems, but you can create business models to solve those social problems. It just clicked for me. And I felt in that moment like, okay, wow, I, as this small little person with, you know, no particular capabilities can actually do something if I just start one business at a time. Um, and so that's how all of this came together for me. Um, and um, yeah, and so would I imagine myself uh, where I was back then? I, I don't know. I didn't have a clear path. I didn't have a clear vision. Um, but uh, one thing that I've learned is basically, which I've learned from Professor Yunus, but also from Professor Latifi is sort of just continue, just stay on, just stay on board, just continue your path, don't give up, eventually you will succeed. And I think this sort of tenacity is clearly something that I've learned from Bangladesh um, and yeah, that I'm trying to be true to, just continue, you know, you, not everything always works, but just stay on board and continue along the right path and um, towards the goal of the three zeros. Um, and eventually you'll make your small little dent um, in that overarching vision. Thank I hope you, I answered your so, question, Yanis. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. I, I think it's super important because when you're studying in the university, more most of the time you don't know what is going to be about your next 10, 15 years and then make you dream about what is going to happen. And hearing you, I think it's going back to that years and going like to what many of our students are living today to see like take the path go in and try to be inspired by our leaders and continue their path also how to go bigger and think uh, dream bigger and i think that's a really great story about you and your humbleness about it so thank you very much now i'm gonna jump to the ysb part the strategies and what was the original dream about YSB? How did it begin? Well, we already heard about how it, it, it began, but what was the original dream? What were the initial objectives? And are you still following that same objectives? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so to be honest, I mean, Professor Yunus had uh, briefly uh, explained my path. So I had heard Professor Yunus speak. I wrote to him. Eventually he wrote back. I don't know. He doesn't remember this anymore, but that was the case. I should pull that email up at some point. Um, and, um, and then he connected me with the German entrepreneur who was already involved with him through lectures, etc. And then together we set up uh, an organization that still exists. Um, I was not an owner in it. I was just like employee number one in that sense called Grameen Creative Lab, which still organizes uh, the Global Social Business Summit and does all kinds of interesting work, um, also based out of Germany. And um, yeah, that was sort of the beginning, how I got involved in the whole idea of social business. And then eventually I said, you know, this, I, this organization is focused more on promoting the idea and like uh, being creative um, around those ideas. Um, and I thought, okay, now I want to be, I want to really be hands-on and I want to create social businesses myself, where I want to really ensure that we can create more great examples like the ones that obviously Grameen has created in Bangladesh. So the vision that we set out um, was really how can we bring those successful models from Bangladesh that have worked amazingly and have worked at scale in Bangladesh, how can we bring that to other countries? Because obviously Bangladesh has many problems, but many countries have many problems and we need to um, solve those problems also in other places and we need to spread that idea. Um, so, so that was really the vision that we set out for. And um, so that is very much still true. So we believe in the power of social business to end poverty. That's really uh, the, the purpose that we um, set out to, to go for. Um, and we have um, now local teams in a variety of different countries. Um, our focus these days is um, in India, where we have an office is in Mumbai and in Bangalore. Um, East Africa, where we have offices in Kenya and in Uganda, um, and in Latin America, where we have offices in, in Brazil and in Colombia. So that's where we have local teams next to our, um, our office in Europe. Um, and then additionally, we also, and, and there what we do is we identify uh, entrepreneurs that want to create social businesses or are already creating social businesses. 
we then um, uh, look at them in more detail to understand do we does the do we believe in the entrepreneur do we believe in that um, social business model do we think this can create a major significant social and environmental impact in that country and once we've done this anal um, analysis we provide them financing so usually loans between a hundred thousand and five hundred thousand dollars that they get as long-term loans so they can build their business. And as soon as they get profitable, they can pay back the loan to us. Um, and then we also provide them with support. So, you know, some entrepreneurs want to meet uh, a big corporation uh, from whom with, which they can sell the products to, or a company may need to know a bit more of how they can improve their marketing. And then we may connect them to a coach or a mentor that knows about marketing. So these are the kinds of things that we do with the companies. Um, and then we have a second um, arm at Uno Social Business, uh, which we, which is sort of our top-down arm, um, where we say we also have to get the big corporations involved only if we're able to change the big corporations and the way that they're thinking about business then we can really make a big dent. Um, so uh, we, we work with large corporations to help them build new social businesses on the side to their big business. Um, and we also help them to buy from social businesses. Um, so, uh, you know, their value chains have a more social and environmental impact. So that's, um, that's how we work with big, um, big companies. In a nutshell, I hope that that describes YSB. I can go more into detail if, if you want on any one of them or on the individual impact numbers that we've been able to reach so far. Thank you. And we are going about to talk about that. <laughs> so uh, have you developed a pattern in your work or each country program is designed according to the same circumstances in each country? Sorry, I, is, I didn't hear that perfectly, unfortunately. Uh, Could you repeat? Yeah, have you developed a pattern in your work or each country's program is designed according to the circumstances in each country? No, we definitely have a methodology that works across the different countries, but um, it is very, very important to have local teams in each of those countries um, who are the ones indeed that are actually identifying and screening the social businesses. So we would never dare, I would never dare based out of Berlin to actually say, you know, this is a good social business or not. It really needs to be a combi combination of an international team and most importantly, a local team that actually understands a local context. So, um, so that is that is very important. Um, so, in other words, um, in general, we um, are sector agnostic. You know, social business to end poverty can be in pretty much any sector. It can be in the agricultural space. It can be in water and sanitation. It can be in income generation. But everything that we focus on in the countries we work in, usually um, that we finance ourselves, focuses on poverty alleviation. Um, so maybe I'll tell you a couple of examples of cool companies uh, that we've actually financed over the last couple of years um, uh, that may be interesting. So one is an example that I always mention, but I'll bring it up here again, um, which is Impact Water, which is a company that actually sells water cleaning systems to schools. Um, and they started out in Uganda. Now they're also in Kenya and Nigeria. Um, and they um, sell these water cleaning systems to schools. So kids have clean drinking water because obviously clean drinking water is a major problem in most developing nations. Uh, and this business has now already reached over 4 million kids with clean drinking water um, and has a financially self-sustainable business model. So that's one example. Another company uh, that I like a lot is called SNB Green. Uh, so they have a um, rickshaw um, um, lease to own model. So they lease electric rickshaws uh, to women, but also to men in part um, over 18 months. Uh, the, the drivers can become, become taxi drivers. They can bring people, they can bring products from A to B. And after 18 months, when they pay the leasing fee, the rickshaw actually um, belongs to them and they now have an asset and they can build their own uh, little business out of this. Um, so that's a fantastic company uh, that we have in India. Uh, there's another fa fantastic company in, in uh, India um, that also generates income uh, in this case for people. It's called Rangsutra and they um, produce um, handicrafts um, with over two and a half thousand women um, that are producing the handicrafts from their homes. And they sell, for example, cushions to uh, big corporations like IKEA, which is also, by the way, a client of ours, but on the corporate side. So this is another example. Um, 
perhaps another example from uh, Brazil, we have a recycling social business in Brazil that um, recycles waste from condos that are being produced there and um, co waste picker cooperatives take the garbage and they recycle it um, and they basically they sort it uh, in different categories and they can sell it and they make an income off of it. And at the same time, obviously, waste is being recycled. So it has a double environmental and social effect. So these are just a couple of the many amazing companies that we have in our portfolio that are all social businesses that all have, have either a social or environmental impact um, and that focus on yeah improving the lives of the poor. Amazing. Thank you. Also, like this uh, spikes a, a question about what has been your better and worst period. What? Why do you consider them as the best and the worst? Um, good question. So I think that um, in terms of worst project, uh, I'll be very honest. You know, sometimes things also don't work out. I think that's also important to share. So. Um, we did have an example, for example, of a company where we, um, I'll, I'll, I won't mention names here, but I'll just tell the story a little bit, where we um, gave that company a small loan. It was really a, not a big loan at that point. It was one of the first things when we entered that country. And it was um, a honey business. And uh, we gave them a small loan to um, yeah, train up honey farmers um, for them to get higher incomes and then uh, take that honey and actually sell it abroad. What happened here, and that's why I really see it as a, like the opposite of a success, is that uh, the entrepreneur did that for a little bit, then realized it was getting too complicated and that it was too much work. Um, and then um, decided to create a, a separate business on the side um, where he would do all the exports. So the money and the revenues came into the export company and the company we financed um, only had the costs. So that was a nice little example where they where um, where, uh, yeah, an entrepreneur was uh, just just used the opportunity of, of taking money and um, well, then in the end defaulted on us. So that was a sad story. We then went to the entrepreneur and said, that's not possible. And in the end, um, well, we, we did get our money back, but uh, it was a little bit of a struggle. So, you know, sometimes things also don't work out ever since we had to improve a little bit um, how we do our due diligence. And we did do that and we learned from that quite significantly. So it was also a good learning um, of how, how you also, you know, how, of course, there are also entrepreneurs that well, don't, don't see the only positive side and also use you to a certain extent. Um, in terms of, I think, the best project, well, I think um, there are a variety of different exciting companies that I really see are succeeding significantly. I think the, the Impact Water example is one. There's another company called um, uh, Tugende, which um, is also a lease to own motorcycle business in Uganda. And they have now uh, reached over 26,000 people with uh, motorcycles um, for them to be able to create their own income. So that's a super exciting example. Um, and then of course, also some of the examples of what we've been able, what we're starting to create or what we have created with big companies um, are also great examples. Um, so, <clears throat> Uh, to give you an example there, but this is still is still in the in the making. We created a joint venture with um, a German uh, Mittelstand company, so a mid-sized uh, corporation that decided that they want to um, work in the field of plastic recycling. Um, and we built a new company together with them in India that uh, picks plastic from the streets uh, with waste pickers. Um, takes that, makes it into pellets, and uses it for the production of uh, plastic bags. So that's a very cool um, social business that we created together with them. Um, and um, and yeah, that's with a large corporation, so it has the potential to really grow significantly. So yeah, just a couple of examples. I hope that that's helpful. And I hope you're also fine with my very openness about um, failures that do, of course, clearly happen sometimes, even in the social business world. Absolutely. I think when we talk about not only the good things that happen when you have awards and you have prizes for YSBC, that's amazing because you position like a leader. And for young people, uh, we can see you as a role model also. But also to be humble and to talk about failures help us to see that 
everyone is a human and that we can make mistakes and we can get confused in the road. So thank you very, very, very much for your openness and your, and your honesty. And I'm gonna pass to a question about the future. What do you see in that crystal ball of the YSV like in 2025? What countries will you take uh, your program to in the next five years, approximately on 10 years also? Um, so basically the vision of the next five years in some ways. <clears throat> Yes, yeah, so we're actually just in the process of developing that. Um, so one way of looking at it is that we would like to, until in the, until over the next five years, deploy um, over 80 million euros in social businesses. Of course, we do not really see money as our number of success in that sense, but it's very hard preemptively to say how much exact impact that's going to have. So how many uh, people's lives that is going to reach. Um, but what we say is we want to, over the next five years, um, invest around about 80 million in uh, social businesses. We made that commitment um, last year, actually, uh, for Professor Yunus's 80th birthday as our commitment um, and made that as our part of our plan um, with the team until 2025. Um, and, um, and, and so that's definitely what we're going to do on the on the investing side. So that means um, <clears throat> we will have to invest in another well, more than a hundred social businesses for sure. So uh, so that's that's really what we're working on and what we're just in the process of breaking down to each country what that means for every country that we're working in, etc. But that's um, that's our big goal for the next um, yeah five years in that sense um, on the social business side, and then. Um, on the corporate side, um, we'll just continue working. Um, you know, we've seen that also during COVID, big corporations were, you know, all uh, in some ways inspired by the new world, but also uh, because they also realized um, everything that Yuno said around the whole topic of no going back. I think a lot of humans um, that sit in corporations realize that this no going back is a very powerful narrative and something that they have to apply to their own individual businesses. Um, but they're still sometimes slower in actually implementing things than talking about them. So um, now it's the time that I think there's a lot of realization in corporations. Now we really have to get them and say, okay, you've now thought about it over 2020. Let's get into action in 2021 and actually change a couple of things and think how you as a business can help change the world rather than, um, than just stay in your normal, good old business as usual. So how can we get you out of the comfort zone, get you into the social business mode of thinking? Um, and um, yeah, and instead of just being on the old track. So we're working on that. And um, so we want to we want to work with many more corporations. We already have amazing clients uh, that we're working with and working for over the last many years, like MAN, IKEA, McCain, um, et cetera, um, SAP, et cetera. But we would like to work with more of these global players and, and help them become better businesses as a whole through working on social business. Great. Well, you talk about COVID in this part, uh, how enterprises have been also uh, trying to implement new new strategies and seeing that we can go back as we were working uh, last year at least. Uh, but tell me, how have you faced the damages done by COVID-19? Well, um... Yeah, COVID-19 was, of course, quite a shock, I think, for everyone. Nobody had foreseen such a pandemic. Um, and um, what we realized in March, when it actually became, when it was officially declared a pandemic, was that whatever would, hap whatever would happen, uh, somehow, as usual, Europe and the US would sort of manage to get through it in some shape or form. But it would again um, hit developing countries so much more and so much harder than than it was going to um, hit uh, the West. And I guess that's also what really indeed has happened. Of course, the case numbers in the U.S. are still the very highest in the entire world, so they're leading the hit list um, in terms of COVID. 
but at least the US and also Europe had economic bailout packages that um, the governments have been able to provide because they're rich countries. And as usual, again, what we're seeing is in more developing or emerging economies, that kind of financial help for businesses, let alone social businesses, is of course not being provided. And of course, just as in the West, um, all these businesses are at risk, um, and particularly the social businesses are at risk because they anyway already have much more difficult business models. Um, and um, they usually don't have gigantic buffers to be able to also go through a crisis like this. And what is so sad of this, uh, uh, of all of this, is that if these social businesses are at risk, these are the businesses of the future. You know, we're all talking about this beautiful new capitalism that we all want to be in. But if these very beautiful businesses that are there, that are already working, that are already showing the future, if they now die because they have a lack of liquidity during the this economic uh, health and I don't know what financial crisis, then we're sort of destroying the basis of that future that we all want to see. So what we realized, so we realized that quite early on and then we said, okay, we at least have to help our own portfolio of companies to make it through this crisis because like how terrible would it be if at the end of the year, which is now, all these companies would not exist anymore. And so what we've managed to do was to create um, an emergency fund for, for our own companies and have been able to provide furlough payments as it's called. So sort of um, um, furlough payments, which means that we were able to uh, keep people employed in those in, in those companies so they were able to keep their uh, main employees they were able to ensure that they could continue um, with their work um, and were able to provide that over six months um, and I think that was actually really important because it gave these companies a little bit of breathing space to adapt to the new reality um, and a little bit of breathing space to yeah change the business model where it needs to be changed or at least create um, a possibility to continue with a normal business model, but with health and safety measures, et cetera, et cetera. So we were able to provide this to almost half of our portfolio companies. And the great result is so far uh, that 100% of our companies are still alive now uh, at the end of the year. And so I'm really proud of our team of Lakshmi, who heads up our, our investment side of things and everyone in the different countries that were working really, really hard um, to get that money out of the door and to make sure that these companies were able to continue. So, so that's one thing that we focus on. Another thing that we focus on, and Yanis, you already um, talked about it, we figured out that um, what we do is of course important, but we also need to see that the broader sector that cares about social business comes together. Uh, and um, we work together with the, the folks at the World Economic Forum to bring together other players in the sector that also care about financing and supporting social um, businesses. Uh, some of them also go a little bit broader into sort of the social entrepreneur space. We focus, of course, clearly on social business, but we brought together this alliance to yeah, exchange, you know, how can we help the companies? How, where do we get money from to help these companies? You know, what other things need to be done? Um, and they've been working hard on um, also in the, on the global stage to tell the stories of social businesses. Um, and so people are aware that they can be a key to solution in this pandemic. Um, yeah, rather than a sector that is just being forgotten on the side. So yeah, these are a couple of the things that we've been working on during COVID. And uh, yeah, knock on wood, I'm looking forward to, let's say, a little bit of a better 2021 and 2022 ahead of us. I think all the world is waiting for that, uh, to have a better, better years coming. But absolutely, uh, I think this moment is is to rethink about how we make business, how we also work with money. And you're an example of that, that almost all the companies are continue working. So they're the ones that are going to face, uh, look like with a lot of love, but also like with the 100 um, during this phase of, of the pandemic. So thank you very much for the follow-up of them. And, and to have these examples for all the other entrepreneurs to see that this is something that works, that this is something that changes the world and that we need to stick on it. 
Uh, there are some questions from the public. One of it is that if you have any example of West Bengal in India, how the social business is working there. And the other, uh, Thomas is asking where we can find data and reports on the impact on social in businesses. Sorry, it just broke up, Yanis, for one second. I'm so sorry. Would you be able to repeat that again? Yes, there are two questions from the polling board. There are some, but we have chose two. It says that if you have any example of West Bengal, India, how the social business is working there. And the other question from Thomas is he is asking where we can find data and reports on the impact of social businesses. Totally. Um, on West Bengal, I'll refer that question to Professor Yunus, because, of course, uh, that's probably closer to your uh, area of geography. We don't um, we do not work. Well, we work across India in that sense, but I'm not aware of a company that's in West Bengal in our portfolio right now. So, Professor Yunus, if you have anything to share on West Bengal, uh, please, please tell um, tell the audience. Um, and then otherwise, in terms of where can you find the impact of social businesses on our website, you can, of course, see our, our own portfolio, unusb.com. But then there's also um, the social businesspedia, um, which the Unus Center runs, where you can find many great examples. So that's another place, of course, on the Unus Center website. Um, yeah, there are a variety of different places where you can find more information about social business. And probably across all of the YSBCs, that's the other thing, all the uni university centers that run YSBCs. Thank you. There's also the socialbusinesspedia.com that you can go and find on, like making the commercial about the social business media. Um, I, I want to ask also, um, in one phrase, how could you draw attention of young entrepreneurs in Europe or around the world towards social business? Well, I mean, I mean, I think uh, what really always works is creating examples, uh, creating examples that uh, stand out, that people believe in, that people see and feel. What we've seen is um, people need examples to be able to get active themselves because otherwise it just feels so theoretical and they don't really know where to start. So um, I think one role that we play at Uno Social Business is to indeed create those examples and make sure that people are aware about them. Um, that's that's one way. And then obviously Professor Yunus is going around the world talking about this. The Uno Social Business Centers are speaking about social business in the universities, which I think makes uh, makes a major impact. Um, and I think it's just really sharing that information because as soon as you have a conversation with people about social business, usually they're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. But often it's just not um, something that is top of everyone's mind because our education system usually tells us create a business, make money, that's the way to go. And that's the way I was educated as well. So given all of that, um, yeah, I, I think it's really all about information. Um, and once you have that, uh, then people have the ability. And then of course, there's also another thing which is access to financing, um, which is of course also required. Um, we can help in the countries that we work in um, to also provide that financing. Thank you. So. There are also some questions about students and it englobes like what advice or how they can jump in into the social business uh, ecosystem work um, and how what what advice you will give to these young ambitious entrepreneurs that want to change the world. Uh, I think my advice would be a pick a problem that you're passionate about and you will be passionate about in the long run. Uh, and then the other one is just, please stay persistent. Um, you know, things do not work out at the beginning. It's usually nobody wants to talk to you at the beginning when you're a starter. People find, you know, it's, it's just tough. You just have to stay on the ball. Do not give up. I think that's the major piece of uh, yeah, advice that I can give to anyone. And eventually things will work out. Um, I mean, even if you look at Professor Yunus's career, he started um, in the mid seventies um, and um, also not from one day from one day to another Grameen Bank was created. It took a long time until uh, it was the success that it is today. Um, and yeah, that's just the advice. Stay on the ball, stay persistent 
stay consistent also because that's another thing that i see a lot of young people doing you know they're jumping from this job and then they do this initiative etc cetera, etc cetera, and they sort of um jump around and i think you know staying true to a mission and 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 sticking with it is is a very important lesson that i've learned for sure great i have had some uh students that ask like how can we change the world when our leaders doesn't hear us and it's kind of difficult because we want to be the voice and i think today or towards next year's uh young entrepreneurs are the ones that are going to make the example of how the systems can work and with with the all the knowledge and all the practice it will be super helpful to have more companies that are more sustainable and have a better impact. Also, well, as part of a YSVC, um, how can YSVCs can collaborate with YSV? Uh, how can we gain some advice or knowledge about what you do, your work or all, all around the globe? Uh, that's actually a great question, Yanis. Um, and I think there are a variety of different ways um, to collaborate. Um, so first of all, what we've what we used to do, but then we didn't do it for a period of time, and now we're doing it again, is actually um, working with the entrepreneurs that are in our portfolio and asking them what kind of help that they would be interested in from student consultants. Um, and um, we've now been able to work with the University of Michigan um, and with LBS in London, um, who came to us. They had basically asked us and said, oh, could we help some social businesses? And then together with them, we designed concrete projects with a, like a beginning and an end, where they then help what, some of our social business entrepreneurs to actually execute on those uh, problems. So I think that's one way of, of supporting. The other um, way is the topic of research. So for example, last year we did some research on the whole topic of corporate social business and corporate social entrepreneurship. So when people within companies create social businesses and we interviewed over 50 companies and that data um, we actually made available to um, also a couple of YSBCs. So for example, Professor Meng um, from one of the Chinese universities was actually participating in this and has access to that data. Um, and as I believe now working on, uh, you know, taking it forward and making also academic publications out of the interviews that we did. Um, so this is this is potentially another thing in the field of research um, and probably also in the field of impact measurement. If you know, universities are interested in looking at some of the social businesses in our portfolio and how they've made an impact on the communities that they work in. I guess that could be another way of collaborating. Um, we've also seen in the countries we work in, also in Brazil and in East Africa, et cetera, that, um, and, and also in Colombia, that there are already some um, ongoing partnerships with the uh, YSBCs and also our offices uh, that are doing the practical work. Great, thank you for the information. Uh, I think when we collaborate, even we are different part of the world, it makes a, be a better change and a bigger impact. And also when young entrepreneurs or students that want to be entrepreneurs and working on that have advice from other leaders and from other parts of the world and they join the ecosystem, it impulses them to go bigger and make a bigger impact. So. Uh, I will be talking to you later, probably, to see how can we collaborate. Uh, I know you work with Colombia, but well, we are so near from, from there, from here, from Mexico. And a last question that I have been seeing from the audience repeatedly, um, as individuals, how can we help you with the YSB or the ecosystem, or how can we help social businesses grow and impact the world? Absolutely. So I think there are a variety of different ways. First is everyone can start a social business. I think we're, uh, we clearly all believe that everyone can be an entrepreneur. Also people that didn't think they were entrepreneurs in the first place. You could do that. Just figure out something small around you. It doesn't have to be far away. It should actually more easily be somewhere around you. 
and just start something small. It can just be, you know, employ one person, um, do something very basic. So that I think that's one way. Um, another way is if you have money, but not a lot of time, you can invest in social businesses, you can finance them, you can give people a starting capital to actually get this done. That's another way. Uh, another option is if you don't want to start anything um, and you do not have money, uh, but you have a little bit of time, you can actually mentor uh, other social social businesses, you know, look in, check on social media, check around in the vicinity where you are. Are there any social businesses that may need help? Um, can I become a mentor to them or can I provide any services or any time, you know, any skill that you will have? Could you could you provide it to them? So there are a variety of, or do you work in a large corporation? Uh, can you actually propose to set up a social business within that company? Or can you in any other shape or form improve um, yeah, the social and environmental impact of that company? You know, everyone is in some kind of place and in some, some kind of position in the world. And from that position, they just have to figure out how can they actually do something um, for the world. But I am fundamentally of the opinion that everyone can do something uh, and just be it very small. Um, but you need to get started. And I, I love, again, how Yunus always says this, you know, doing something for yourself may make you happy, but doing something for others makes you super happy. And I find that I find that very helpful because that's also the truth for me. I mean, what I do with social business, I do for myself because I find it fun and it's enjoyable, but it makes me super happy because I, in that process, also can help others. And, and I think that that's, yeah, also one of those very inspiring statements that he always makes. Um, now you're back here, Professor Yunus, so I'm speaking about you. <laughs> but but I like that a lot. So I hope that these are a couple of suggestions of what individuals can be doing. Perfect, thank you very much, Saskia. So we are coming to the end of the conversation. It has been an amazing lecture. Um, I would love to have more time and I hope to have the honor to match again in another space. Uh, to the public, thanks for joining us the conversation. And lastly, well, thank you very much, Juno Center and Professor Junos for this space, for the closing remarks and sending you the Microsoft Senate. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Yanis. Thank you, Saskia. This really has been a great conversation and I can see Professor Yunus is clapping. So he he's also very happy. And um, personally for me, I've learned a lot about YSB today again. And I think our uh, YSBCs should also look at the way Saskia mentioned to connect and to strengthen our partnerships. Um, Yanis in UDEM, um, Mexico, they're always interested to collaborate. So again, uh, our YSBCs, many opportunities and to our audience who are watching, if you have any questions for our YSBC program, for YSB, they sound similar. YSBCs are our you know, social business centers, our academic partnerships and collaboration. And YSB is our sister organization, UNO Social Business, um, based in Germany. But um, we all are part of one family. So send in your questions to our email, ysbc at unocenter.org. Uh, we can forward the, your questions to Saskia if, and I'm sure she'd be happy to, to answer. And uh, so thank you very much again and uh, for being a part of our session, for, for part of our family. And uh, now I would kindly request our IT team to place the slides of the upcoming lecture. Thank you very much. the music we start dancing at the same time we're still in life <laughs>